how's everybody doing today? Um, I'm going to be talking about how to get into traditional leather work today. Um, and before we begin, I want to let you know that I do have a freebie. It's called the Roadmap for How to Get Into Traditional Leather Work. It talks about six steps to take um, to make sure that you're not spending money on tools that you don't need or materials that you don't need. It's just kind of like a roadmap. And um, the guide also talks about mistakes that you can avoid. And you can get this freebie just by going to leatherbeast.com. It's right there on the homepage. It's called the Roadmap. Um, <clears throat> You can click the link in the description as well if you're watching this on Facebook. So anyways, I just want to put that out there. Um, but today, I want to kind of tell you how I got into leatherwork. So back in 2012, um, I worked at a job where they had just created a creative workshop program for the employees. And it was basically, um, <clears throat> excuse me an all expenses paid opportunity for the employees to go and take an approved workshop in any sort of creative field. So I worked for a really awesome lady um, who really believed in creating an awesome work environment and she cared about giving back to her employees, yada, yada, yada. So this was like really awesome, right? Because you don't really get this in, in most jobs um, these days, unless you work for like Google or something. Um, so I began my search right away for a leather workshop, but I was coming up empty. I don't know if you've ever searched for leather workshops, in-person workshops, but there aren't really that many hands-on workshops in the US. And there's a there's only a handful in Europe too. There was one in, in Italy that I was considering, but it was like, um, strongly suggest that you speak Italian to attend this workshop. So um, <clears throat> I didn't go with that one. But finally, I found this woman in California who had a leather school. I was super excited. So I started like digging into her um, program a little bit deeper. And I found out that not only was she a leather master with a school, but she also worked for the luxury leather company Hermes. She apprenticed with them right out of high school. She was French. Um, so she had an opportunity to apprentice with them right out of high school. And then she worked there for many years. So long story short, I found this workshop, I got my all expenses paid workshop approved, and I attended this leather workshop and learned traditional leatherworking basics. That's really where I um, <clears throat> learned how much I loved leather work and where I learned all of the basics. So this is how I got into traditional leather work. But I understand that this is not how most people get into traditional leather work. Most people just struggle even to find out what tools or materials they need. Um, so I, I know I'm really lucky in that sense. So you might be wondering, how can I get started without having to spend thousands on an in-person workshop? Um, by the way, if you do have the time and the money, I would highly recommend her workshop. If you want more info on that, just send me an email. Um, but I do know that the cost is really prohibitive for a lot of people. So if you're an absolute beginner, like you've never picked up a leatherworking tool in your life and you want to get started with traditional leatherworking, then um, I would suggest you check out my roadmap that I mentioned a couple minutes ago. Um, <clears throat> it really, it just ensures that you stay on track and you bypass all of the frustrating situations like choosing the wrong tools or unnecessary tools because there's a lot of different types of um, leather work that you can choose and they some of them require different types of tools and we're going to get into that a little bit more um, and it'll also help you bypass frustrating situations like wasting time trying to figure out everything on your own googling all of that and then just learning the incorrect techniques and having to correct your mistakes later if you just download the roadmap, it's at leatherbeast.com. It's free. Um, you just got to put in your email so I know who to send it to. Um, and you can get some of this really basic information that's going to save you a lot of time and money. So let's get into some of my tips for how to get started with traditional leatherwork. Number one, 
first and foremost, you should determine what kind of leather work it is that you're interested in doing. And you might be thinking, isn't all leather work the same? It's, it's leather and you make stuff out of it. Well, not exactly, because you have a lot of different methods and a lot of different results that you can get. You have rustic methods where the stitching doesn't have to be perfect and um, and you kind of are more just, you know, using household tools to sort of roughly create, you know, bags and belts and things like that. So it's a lot more, it's rustic, you know, there's not really a, a set, a hard and fast set of rules. And then you have the sort of American West style. Um, where the, te the thread tends to be a little bit thicker and stitches aren't necessarily slanted. They're straight, but they might not be slanted. Um, you might have um, stitching holes instead of stitching slants. Um, those are just a couple of the differences. And then you have the European sort of more refined method. This is the method that I learned from my um, master leather worker um, teacher in the workshop. Um, <clears throat> this is also the method, it's kind of a hybrid method, but mainly the method that I teach in my um, Mastering Traditional Leatherworking Basics course. I'm sure you've heard me talk about my course. Um, and I, like I said, I did make some tweaks to how I teach that course. For example, I teach Leathercraft using stitching chisels instead of pricking irons. I learned how to use the pricking irons in my workshop, but it does take a little bit to get the hang of that and really perfect that. So um, I switched over to using the chisels just because it's a little bit easier for the beginner to really get it right off the bat. Um, thanks, Alan James. Yes, I did get a haircut. <laughs> I can't stop cutting my hair. Um, okay, number two. You want to gather your leather and materials that you can kind of practice on first when, when you're first getting started. So I highly recommend looking for some scrap practice leather. Um, instead of going out and purchasing an entire cowhide right off the bat, um, unless you have a big budget, then go for it. But if you are someone who is on a budget, um, <clears throat> Go ahead and look on eBay or some of these other um, leather distributors. They do sell scrap lots and scrap leather. And um, I recommend going and getting some of that scrap leather and really pr pr practicing and really mastering those basic um, skills before you dive into a big side of leather because um, you know, leather is expensive and it can also be intimidating when you get that hide of leather. You don't want to mess it up. You don't want to waste it. So sometimes it'll sit on your shelf. Anybody else ever done that? I used to do that all the time. Um, so you can also, whenever you get the scrap lots, you can also really get to know the different types of leather in person, the different weights of leather first before purchasing um, a large expensive hide. This just really allows you to get used to different leather types and the terminology. <clears throat> um, like I said, eBay has scrap lots. Um, they have, and, and they're usually pretty good about putting down what type of leather it is and also the, um, the weight of leather. That was a really great way how I learned what a two ounce weighted leather is versus a four ounce or a five ounce or a seven ounce and how that differs rather than having to buy a whole hide of that and then getting it and being like, I don't want to work with this. It's way, it's not what I, it's not what I want. So, um, make sure you, um, make sure you do that and really practice, just get the basics down, you know, really practice your saddle stitching, practice all of your, um, beginner, your, um, uh, your methods for, um, that you do before you saddle stitch, like creating your stitching guides and all of that. All of this I talk about in Mastering Traditional Leatherworking Basics. And then also practicing your edge finishing. And number three, take time and learn and master the basic techniques. This kind of ties into the last one that I was just talking about. By taking the time to learn the what the correct tools are for the type of leather work that you want to do and the techniques up front, you're going to save yourself a lot of time and frustration. Um, for example, there's a few different steps involved in preparing your leather piece for any basic project. First, you know, you want to create 
create your stitching guidelines so that your stitches line up really evenly and in a straight formation. This, of course, I'm talking about not if you're interested in doing rustic leather, because like I said, you can kind of do anything with rustic leather work. But if you're looking for a really polished and refined um, <clears throat> result in your leather work, you want to do all of these prep steps, steps like creating your stitching guidelines. And, um, and if you don't use that, then your stitches tend to look a little, a little sloppy, a little crooked. Um, and then of course you want to make your stitching holes or your stitching marks, depending on if you're using the chisels or the irons. Um, and yeah, so you just want to be using the best techniques and you really want to master those techniques. Um, and after that, it really just comes down to practice, 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 and avoid moving on to the complicated projects um, before you've really mastered the basics. I see a lot of people doing this and um, I can tell they get very frustrated and, um, and they're looking for advice how to do something, but um, really I would encourage you to stick with really simple projects, really get down the basics first and, and master those basics because it's going to save you again, a lot of time and money because you're not going to be wasting a lot of leather, you know, trying to do these complicated things when you don't really have the skills yet to do it. Um, so, <clears throat> and then that just allows you to create more beautiful work. Um, you have to, put in a little bit more time up front to be able to learn and master those basic techniques, but then you can kind of move on and start to incorporate more um, complex uh, methods in your leather work. So if you are interested in getting started and you are that person, that beginner leather worker who um, doesn't really know how to get started and you're concerned about wasting money on tools or materials that you don't really need um, and you want to avoid that, go to leatherbeast.com or if you're look, watching this on Facebook, um, the link is right there in the description. Um, and you can download my guide. It's a free guide. It's how to get started with leather work. It's a roadmap that gives you the steps for how to get started and kind of guides you along the way um, and gives you some basic introductory information on leather work and also what kinds of mistakes that you should avoid. Um, and just because you might not be able to take an in-person workshop with a master leather worker like I did, doesn't mean you can't learn how to create beautiful leather work um, on your own, on your own time. Um, all you need is just that roadmap and um, it doesn't have to be um, difficult. You just need um, to follow the steps and make sure you master those basics before you move on to the more complex projects. Um, Guys, this is going to be a kind of a shorter video today. I'm not really feeling that great. I don't know if you can hear that in my voice, but I did want to pop on and just give you some of that info and let you know about that free guide that I have over on Leather Beast. So um, go download that and I will talk to you next week. I hope you have a great Wednesday. Bye now. Bye.